Yeah, I'll react to that, sure. Hey guys. Okay. My name's Connor. Uh Nick Chibben, um, Rhode Island, New England, US. I react to history stuff. Hi. Uh hit all the buttons. I'm curious why this is, and I haven't reacted. To, I'm gonna give preemptive like. I'm not. Uh, why did Italy join the Axis powers? I am not entirely sure, since they were on the opposite side in World War One, and so was Japan. Right? Japan also switched. And let's go. Original link to the video, top of the description. Let's go. Ooh, maps. Italy's reputation. Right. ...in World War II is generally marked by his decision to switch sides from the... I gotta restart. Italy's reputation in World War II is generally marked by his decision to switch sides from the Axis to the Allies. This generally leaves us wondering why the Italians ever aligned themselves with Germany if they were only going to deceive them with such ease later on. So, why did Italy ever join the Axis powers? I, I sort of have a guess. So, is it be... So... Hitler was a big fan of, was a big Mussolini fan, right? And so I, I think the fascism, fascismo, Paschetti, uh, I think maybe that, the fascism sort of uh, tie, because fascism wasn't such a, a kind of blatantly negative term as it's used today, right? Back then, right? It was sort of like you declared yourself uh, fascist powers. And, um, let me know if anything I'm saying is wrong, by the way, like you guys are good at. Uh, and where was I going? Oh, yeah. So maybe that, that connection maybe steered each, them to... That's the best guess I have, honestly. To understand why the Italian leadership felt that they would benefit more from an alliance with Hitler than anyone else, we first have to look at why Italy may have viewed the alternatives as adverse options. Ethiopia. One of the main reasons for this was likely due to the outcome of the Paris Peace Conference. Similar to the Germans, the Italians were profoundly unhappy with the terms of the Treaty of Versailles. What? Although Italy would technically claim victory, considering the fact that this is interesting. I, this this caught my attention. ...of Versailles. Although Italy would technically claim victory, considering the fact that they had ended the war alongside the Allied powers, it seems that the aftermath did not treat them as victors. Having already lost a vast... Hold, 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 on, hold on, hold on. I just want to make sure you guys can hear it. ...vast number of casualties during World War I, the Treaty of Versailles additionally... It seems that the aftermath did not treat them as victors. Having already lost a vast number of casualties during World War I, the Treaty of Versailles additionally stripped the Italians of lands that they had believed they should have been promised by the Treaty of London. During the negotiations of the Paris Peace Conference, Italy reminded the Allies of their earlier commitment, demanding that they be given the new territory to add to their northern border, and asked for an additional strip of land as well. To the Italians' great agitation, the Allies declined the new request for more additional land beyond the prior agreement, and instead gave that strip and more to neighboring Yugoslavia. This anger drove them to a nationalist-led Italian occupation of Fiume, which eventually ended when the Italian government refused to annex the city. As Italy and Germany now both tried to bounce back from the war and figure out how... So this is the pre... This is the start of World War One map. I mean, World War Two map right here. This... Look how long Czechoslovakia is. Or not... Yeah, the Czech Republic. Czechoslovakia. So you got Bulgaria, Greece, Albania, Yugoslavia, Hungary, Czechoslovakia... Austria, Switzerland, okay. I always thought until pretty recently that Corsica was part of uh, Italy. I, d I just assumed. Anger drove them to a national 
Nicholas led Italy beyond the prior agreement and instead gave that strip and Italian occupation of Fiume, which eventually ended when the Italian government refused to annex the city. As Italy and Germany now both try to bounce back from the war and figure out how to deal with the disappointment of the peace treaty, they began to develop a sense of cooperation with each other. Something that helped with this kindling friendship was the advancement of fascism in both nations. The country's nationalist fascist party hey. came to power Oops. in 1922, okay. with Benito Mussolini at its helm as prime minister. Oh, this new leadership quickly began to stamp out any competition and establish their totalitarian rule. The nationalist party was violently anti-socialist, despite the fact that Mussolini himself had actually been a part of the Socialist Party until he was booted for supporting Italy's entry into the Great War. Nonetheless, since he had newly adopted a strong anti-socialist sentiment, this put Mussolini and his party on the same page as the German National Party, which would greatly benefit them later on. By the end of but, but they came out on top in the First World War, and we're on the winning side. I know they just said they didn't get much, if anything, as a result, but so they didn't like him for being pro World War One. The German National Party, which would greatly benefit them later on. You know what I mean. By the end of 1925, Prime Minister Benito Mussolini had now become Il Duce, or the leader of the entire Italian government. This made the position of the fascists and the fight against socialism in Italy even stronger, which would have begun to have great appeal to Germany as their own government soon went in the same direction. Furthermore, as the German National Socialist Party rose to power, Mussolini would have seen Germany in an even better light. Still, by this point though, before the rise of German fascism, Mussolini viewed Germany as a much better potential ally than the actual Allied powers. At the start of his reign, Ildus was already looking to partner with the contemporary Weimar Republic during their dispute with Yugoslavia and France over the previously occupied territory of Fiume. Hoping to consolidate his own power and to keep his former socialist party at bay, having the Germans on his side was likely a good idea. When the 1930s rolled around, even Hungary's prime minister was aware of the growing bonds between the nationalists of Germany and the fascists of Italy. The Hungarian leader, Gyula Gombos, was so enamored by the German-Italian relationship that he even hoped and attempted to add his own nation into this unofficial alliance. Gumbos unexpectedly died in 1936 before having finished negotiations concerning a partnership with Germany, which left Hungary with no more than the Rome Protocols from Italy. The relationship between Germany and Italy was also on the rocks at this point. Okay, sorry, continue. Germany and Italy was also on the rocks at this point. The matter of Germany annexing Austria had thrown a wrench in things, as Mussolini was strongly opposed to the idea of Anschluss. The government in Austria at the time was largely anti-socialist, and Mussolini warned Hitler that he wanted to see this leadership remain. The latter responded quite indignantly. Guys, I'm so confused about this, and I, I reacted to a video, um yesterday or the day before hey switzerland kind of looks like a tardig tardigrade the water bear add um what was i talking about see this leadership remains right okay uh something i really noticed so a few days ago or yesterday okay in the past a recent past i reacted to a uh communism versus socialism video because I really want to know the difference between the two. Um, my understanding is that, and let me know if I'm wrong, this is one of those topics I, I'm, I'm going to present my opinion, but I, I really am I'm on shaky gr ground here, and I could be wrong. But is, is communism essentially complete socialism? Like, like it, so technically, so socialism is any policy contributed by the government to people as benefits right and so you could say technically even the military is a socialist like if you have a military that then you have a some form of socialist policy so it's just 
what degree of complete social is that communism i don't know but um and so hitler he was he obviously he his hatred for the jews and and i i learned not just communism but i guess capitalism in america he blamed too and so he doesn't like capitalism he doesn't like communism but he's a social he, he's a national socialist I just, why, so why would Mussolini be afraid of, of Hitler not liking a socialist um, person in Austria? Uh, I just, I don't, I don't get that. The latter responded quite indignantly, stating that he wished to throw the Austrian Chancellor Engelbert Duff Luce into the sea. Mussol Take what I said about uh, c communism, capitalism, social with a grain of salt. I really uh, am, and sh I don't, I, I'm no expert. Mussolini did not throw the Austrian Chancellor Engelbert Duff Luce into the sea. Mussolini did not take this lightly, and he quickly began to lose trust in the German government. Not only was he displeased with the Austria situation, but he found the likelihood that the Germans would leave the region of South Tyrol to Italy, as they had previously promised, concerningly low. Nonetheless, both leaders were still open to maintaining friendly ties and decided to meet for the first time in 1934. This Venice conference quickly became contentious as Hitler tried to strong-arm Mussolini into approving the annexation of Austria, and Mussolini refused to give in. Despite the heated nature of the negotiations, the German Chancellor eventually agrees to at least temporarily respect Italy's it's wish. It's crazy, you'd think... Germany would just be out of Italy's class in terms of power, but Hitler just seems to have so much respect for Mussolini, where he just, like, he, like, sees him as an equal, if not above, in... And ...leave Austria alone. Only a few weeks um, not after above, the tense but... meeting, though, Chancellor Duflus was assassinated, and Mussolini Yikes. immediately blames his German counterpart, which may have been partially valid given the fact that it was his supporters of the annexation who took down the Austrian leader. Italy reacted by deploying troops and warning the Germans that any military action against Austria might end in a war with Italy, despite how hard the Italians had previously worked to build friendly relations. Luckily, Luckily for Mussolini, Germany promptly cut ties with their supporters in Austria and took no responsibility for the assassination. Joe would be a cool um, potential history. Oh, I gotta watch potential history. Uh, alternative history. What's it called? Like an alt, like a what if alternate timeline. Um, what if in both World War One and World War Two, if in World War One. You know, there's, there's kind of memes around Germany having these noob uh, uh, teammates. Um, and I, I wonder just how much faster they would have lost the wars had they been alone and without Austria-Hungary in World War One, and without and, and Ottoman Empire in World War One, and without Italy and Japan in World War II. The Italian leader had lost confidence in Germany and now turns to France in hopes of forming an alliance that would better protect Austrian independence. After Germany's support, despite all around condemnation of Italy's invasion of Ethiopia, though, the tides turned back in favor of a German Italian alliance. A perfect opportunity to restore the friendly ties came when the Spanish Civil War erupted in 1936 and Italy decided to intervene. Possibly as a symbol of unity, the Germans did the same. Both sides sent airplanes, men, and weaponry to the nationalists. Over Following France. this joint intervention, the Italian foreign minister, Gallia Sociano, was invited to Berlin in hopes of taking the alliance even further. Deliberations were soon scheduled between the German ambassador and Ciano so they could discuss the next steps. Though the negotiations were at times heated, and there appeared to once again be a risk of losing the friendship, the results in the end were positive. By the conclusion of the talks, Germany and Italy had set up the new 
Rome-Berlin Axis Alliance. The reason behind Italy's determination to form this partnership, both politically and militarily, up to this point had been based on more than just the similar government structures and shared anger over the terms of the Treaty of Versailles. Maybe more importantly, the alliance had become readily significant for Italy because they wanted a war with France. The aim was to begin war preparations in 1935, despite the temporary cooperation with France, because by this point, Germany would be freed from some of the terms listed in the 1919 treaty. Both sides were in need of rebuilding and rearmament before the retaliatory war could be truly considered against France though. And Germany was especially desperate for increased weaponry after its military had been nearly stripped bare by the Treaty of Versailles. This likely played a role in why Germany was so eager to form an official alliance with Italy. So, when the Pact of Steel was finally signed on May 22, 1939, the reason which had led to Italy's decision to join the Axis side of World War II was rooted almost... Why is uh, Ribbentrop and, and this uh, Chiano guy... Um, so that's Hitler, where's Mussolini? entirely Mussolini. in the regime of Mussolini. The need to consolidate and grow his rule and the determination to fight off socialism were both key priorities for Mussolini that the Germans could easily assist him with. Despite the temporary disputes between the fascist powers, I thought he was for socialism. What is, what is going on? ...could easily assist him with. Despite the temporary disputes between the fascist powers, it appears that both sides understood the greater benefit in staying together than attempting to align with those they had both deemed as unreliable after the Paris Peace Conference. Wait. Mussolini felt that his best chances of expanding his party and regime, keeping socialist enemies at a low or non-existent, and retaliating for the losses after Versailles was to work with the Axis powers. That was a really great video, but man, it was an amazing video and something I didn't know they had this much tension and whatnot before becoming allies. But man, did something go right over my head. So uh, the problem goes back to, if you want to leave, you know, it was a great video. I'll see you guys next time for leaving, but here. Even so, Hungary's prime minister said the no. the matter being the heat, Right here. This is where I, I get confused. Germany and Italy was also on the rocks at this point. The matter of Germany annexing Austria had okay. thrown a wrench in things, as Mussolini was strongly opposed to the idea of Anschluss. Right. The government in Austria at the time was largely anti-socialist. Okay, so anti-socialist. And Mussolini warned Hitler that he wanted to see this leadership remain. The latter responded quite indignantly. So, okay, so Mussolini is against socialism. There's a... God, what's wrong the with me? The matter of Germany annexing Austria had thrown a wrench in things, as Mussolini was strongly opposed to the idea of Anschluss. Right. The government in Austria at the time was largely anti-socialist. Okay. And Mussolini warned Hitler that he wanted to see this leadership remain. All right, Mussolini is anti-socialist. He's worried because Adolf Hitler, who is in the National Socialist Party, but then that goes back to my question about socialism versus communism and why Hitler would be so pro-socialist and not pro-communist. Okay, I understand. That was an amazing video. Um, sorry about my confusion there at the end. All right, awesome. See you guys next time.